Chris here are. It's been a few weeks since Circuit Breaker started. I don't know about you, but one of the things that I really look forward to is the weekend where I can gather in that covenant time with God's people and God's family to worship Him. And this is that moment right now. As the psalmist says, it is good to give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever.
Almighty Lord, we pray and we ask, Lord, that we will trust you more and more each day. Lord, the situation around us is difficult. Lord, it breaks our heart to see many different just different people being affected, different groups, different industries. But Father, help us, O Lord God, to trust in your name. Because Lord, in your name, you have overcome. You have overcome and Lord, you will bring us through this time, Lord. So Lord, we continue to lift our hands, our praises unto you. Teach us to walk closer and closer each day with you, Lord. Give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are living in an unusual time, and the circuit breaker restrictions have had significant impact on how we experience community life. Let us pause and ask ourselves, what should fellowship look like in a time like this? I believe that biblical principles for Christian fellowship are still very relevant and applicable in our current situation. Today we will focus our attention on one of the lectionary readings for the fourth Sunday of Easter, and the text is one that would be familiar to many of us. Let's look at Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we see that the early Christians devoted themselves to four things the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Let's consider whether we can follow the same pattern in our present situation. I will give more attention to the theme of fellowship, but first let's briefly look at the other three areas of church life. Thanks to the wonders of technology, many of us have been able to continue in our corporate study of biblical teaching of scripture, growing in the word together. You watching this video is an example of that. We have online sermons and services. Cell groups continue to meet via video conferencing, not only listening to a sermon, but often engaging in reflection and discussion together. Some of us now listen to several sermons each week. We have also been able to continue in corporate prayer using different platforms. This takes place during online services, prayer meetings, cell group meetings. Intercessors have been gathering online to pray together. We have had to adjust to a very different way of doing things, but we have been able to continue to grow in word and prayer during this time of physical separation. In fact, due to changes in the way that we work, because we have not been commuting on a daily basis, many of us find that we have more time on our hands. Some have shared with me that they have been able to devote more time to scripture and prayer, and that is certainly wonderful. Unfortunately, however, we have not been able to break bread together. Missing out on Holy Communion has been difficult and painful for many of us because it is such a rich expression of our community life, 
our corporate thanksgiving and worship to God. Even as we lament the fact that we cannot receive this sacrament together, it is important to remember that Holy Communion is an outward expression of an inward reality. And this inward reality hasn't changed. We are still the body of Christ, bound together as the family of God, remembering and proclaiming Jesus' death until he comes again. We continue in thanksgiving and worship for all that he has done for us and for all that he's going to do. We do this waiting eagerly for the day to come when we can physically break bread together once again. We now look at fellowship and I will spend more time reflecting on this theme. What does it mean to devote ourselves to fellowship in this season? How can fellowship continue? And what should it look like? The word translated as fellowship is the Greek word koinonia. Koinonia. It expresses a sense of sharing, of having something in common. In Acts 2.42, we see the first use of this word in the New Testament, referring to how the believers shared a common life. For the early church, sharing a common life involved corporate spiritual nourishment, growing in the understanding of teaching and doctrine, spending time in prayer as a community, worshipping God together in the temple and also in their homes. But that wasn't all. They weren't only concerned about spiritual nourishment, but physical nourishment as well. They saw it as a priority to ensure that everyone in the community had material provisions to be able to live well. They shared their spiritual wealth. They also shared their material wealth. For them, sharing a common life meant that they had all things in common. Everything they had was shared. Now, this wasn't socialism. The believers were not compelled to give up their possessions for equal distribution in the community. They did periodic acts of charity. This wasn't a system in which everyone was required to sell their possessions once and for all. No. Acts chapter 4, verses 33 to 35, uh, in the New International Version, reads like this. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all, that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. When needs arose, those with means helped to meet those needs. A voluntary response to God's grace. This shows us the deep communion, the deep relationship shared by the early believers. Acts 2, 46 says that they received the food with glad and generous hearts. Because of this spirit of generosity, in the community, there was great joy amongst God's people. It is so important for us to know that the early church experienced fellowship not only in gathering together. Fellowship was not merely hanging out after the service. It was much more than that. The common life that they shared went, went much deeper than just a physical gathering. And we can, and we should, share a common life in a similar manner. Thankfully, most of our church members are not struggling financially during this crisis. This doesn't mean that nobody needs help because some do. The church should help using official means, of course, but we as their brothers and sisters in Christ should help as well. But for most of our church members, the greatest needs at this time are not financial or material. Their needs may be emotional or pastoral. They need support to adjust to change. 
They need support to cope with feeling cut off from others. Perhaps there are tensions at home that result from family members spending an unusual amount of time together within a confined space. For some, working from home is more pressurizing, more demanding than the previous routine, especially because not everyone is comfortable with the increased use of technology that has now become necessary. How can we personally help to meet such needs? Those who are in cell groups are likely to remain well connected. But are we looking out for those who are not in cell groups? Those who do not have the support of a cell community and are deprived of the care that this can bring. Can we get in touch with people who are somewhat on the fringe of our community? Can we send them a text, have a chat with them, perhaps a phone call or video call to find out how they are doing? We are relational beings and we need this human touch. This shouldn't be seen as the duty of the pastor alone. We all have a part to play in showing such care and concern. Can I also encourage you to look out for your cell leaders and your ministry leaders? So often they are expected to provide care, but let's not forget that they need care as well. To take things a little further, let's ask how else can we care for one another during this time? I was recently reading a book and the author shared about something that happened to him years ago. He and his wife were struggling to make ends meet. He was worried about paying the rent, about buying necessities. The fridge was empty and he had run out of money. One day his wife came home and she had bought a bouquet of flowers and he was really upset. How could you think of buying flowers when we can't even eat, he exclaimed. He wrote that his wife's reply has been etched in his heart for over 30 years now. She said, we need to feed our souls too. We need to feed our souls too. This call to feed each other's souls, to bring beauty into each other's lives had a significant impact on this author's view of life, of his understanding of what God requires of us. He saw the importance not merely of ensuring survival, but of bringing satisfaction, delight, joy, of bringing beauty into the lives of others. There may not be many in our community who are struggling to pay the rent or to buy necessities, we thank God that most of us have enough. But we could surely do with more beauty in our lives. We could do with a bouquet of flowers, not literally, but symbolically. We need others to feed our souls, to nourish our souls, perhaps through gifts of some sort, but in some cases, simply through care and concern, sincerely expressed. Could we, as a church community, bring beauty into each other's lives? Could we not only ensure the survival of our fellow church members, but seek to bring them satisfaction? I'm happy to say that there are some in our midst who are already doing this. One sister sent customized care packages to her cell group mates. And these contained not necessities, but things that that person would like and would enjoy, thoughtfully chosen and delivered to their doorstep. And those gifts, of course, were very much appreciated. They were received with much joy. I have been blessed with food, with coffee, dessert, a book, and even beer. And 
Well, this was obviously not given to me for my survival, but for my satisfaction, for my enjoyment, and I certainly enjoyed them very much. This is not just about spiritual nourishment, not just about physical nourishment, but also emotional nourishment. Beyond sharing bread, sharing provisions, what could you do to bring beauty into someone else's life? What could you do to nourish someone's soul? What should fellowship look like in a time like this? I'm sure you would agree that we have many opportunities for rich and deep fellowship, even though we cannot gather together physically. We can still share life together. And the more we are willing to give, the more we will all receive. Our text ends with a fascinating description of what took place as a result of the common life shared by the early Christians. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. History records for us that non-Christians had this to say about the early church. See how they love one another. See how they love one another. No doubt many came to faith because of what they saw in the church community. We would, of course, remember Jesus' words in John 13, verses 34 to 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Our koinonia, our sharing of this common life, marked by graciousness and generosity, is not only an inward dimension, but a powerful outward dimension as well. Friends, I invite us to respond to God's word by devoting ourselves to true fellowship and offering to him everything that we have to serve him and to serve his people. May he use each of us to be a blessing to many others and to bring glory to his name. Please join me in singing this song as a response, as a way of offering ourselves to God. Take my 
messages for thee, filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself, and I will be ever only all. Let us pray. Lord, we thank for all your wonderful blessings upon us. And Lord, here we offer ourselves to you afresh. Use us to serve and to bless at this. And use us to glorify your holy name. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are two things we can do together this week. We can pray and we can care. On Tuesday night at 8 p.m., we gather together for CR at prayer. I encourage as many as possibly can to log in as we stand together in the gap to pray for the Lord's healing on the nations, to uplift one another in prayer, and so to pray for His church. Last week, you heard from Dr. Loy Chong Jin about CR care. More information is available with your cell leaders as well as the staff. I just want to leave you with one key information this week, and there is a care hotline that we have established. The number of this hotline is 901-83418. 901-83418. So if you know of someone, or maybe yourself, who need a listening ear, you can call this number. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Hello everybody, I'm Gabriel and I'm Ruth and we are from Elohim Cell Group and we're here to share a short snippet of our journey this few months so when everybody has been staying at home during this whole circuit breaker period uh, Ruth and I we have been shuffling to the uh, hospital every day and that's because we have been uh, visiting our little baby boy Emmanuel uh, who was born 14 weeks early and he was only at 870 grams. 
And so given that set of circumstances, uh, the doctors prepared us that he had only a little more than 50% chance of survival. And upon hearing that, we were both uh, shattered. And uh, we were really living by the day because each new day brought along with it uh, new uncertainties. Um, things like Emmanuel having to battle uh, PDA, which is actually uh, more or less like a, a heart condition. He had to battle a series of infections. And most recently, he had to battle with uh, a stage 3 NEC. Uh, in short, it's essentially a, a condition to his uh, intestines, which caused his abdomen to bloat up and thereby really applying a lot of pressure on his lungs. And so uh, the surgeons actually mentioned that uh, an operation was the only way out. And given that also, um, he only had 50% chance of survival also. So, I mean, Ruth and I, we were absolutely uh, broken by that. Um, but I guess um, through it all, God really uh, showed his faithfulness. Uh, and, and you know, he delivered Emmanuel and we are happy to share that Emmanuel is currently recovering uh, quite well and God had actually uh, provided the best possible outcome of the operation. It has been a tough journey. Uh, there were ups and there were downs, as many of you don't know. Uh, many times we, we prayed and we cried together. Uh, and I think just two weeks ago, before the whole operation, we really surrendered everything to God. We told God, when God Emmanuel's life is created by you, and we commit him into your hands, because that's all we can do. And um, we just want to thank everyone for joining with us, for praying with us. We learned the importance of prayer, community, um, and, and, and small, small instances of support like, you know, just reaching out to, to people who are hurting via WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, even people delivering coffee to us and, and, and people reaching out to us even though we, we haven't been, you know, communicating, uh, in a long time. We really appreciated all that. That's, that's what really got us through this, this few months. So it's been, 80 plus days already, and uh, we hope to to be able to share the good news with everyone of Emmanuel's return um, into our home. So through this whole time, uh, we we also you know played worship songs before entering the NSC to sign each other up. Um, we hung on to God's promises um, to to the, the words shared in this Bible, and. Um, we just want to encourage everyone who is fighting a battle in your own life as well um, to, to continue to press on, uh, continue to lean on God and we will all get through this together. It is a very difficult and challenging time for Ruth and Gabriel um, and many of you have been praying for this couple and also for our little warrior Emmanuel since the day that he was delivered. <coughs> Emmanuel is a is really a fighter. He has been fighting uh, through the different challenging medical condition and we have seen how the Lord's hand has been upon him. And Emmanuel is not just a gift to Ruth and to Gabriel, but also to us here in our COR family. So we want to do our part as a family of God to come together and to support him in prayer and to look to our Heavenly Father that he will bring healing upon his son in his own perfect timing. Would you join your hearts with mine as we look to our Heavenly Father in prayer? Lord, we thank you that you are the giver of life. We thank you that you are the Father of light in whom there is no shadow of turning. All good gifts and life itself comes from you. And so, Lord, this, this, this day we look to you for our son, Emmanuel. Father, we commend to him your fatherly goodness. Lord, bring about healing, we pray. You know the various medical conditions that, that he's fighting against, that he's struggling against. Lord, but we turn our eyes from all this to you. And we ask now that the power of your Holy Spirit, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, 
will be at work in his little body right now. Lord, cause your healing virtue to come upon him, every single part of his body, Lord, every single organ from his brain, Lord, to his lungs, to his liver, to his gut, to his intestines, to his heart, Lord, to his kidneys, Lord, we pray for repair and restoration. We pray <clears throat> for preservation. We pray that they will be functioning at full capacity. We pray also, Lord, that his uh, digestive system will be able to, uh, to ingest and as well as to digest, Lord, the milk that they are feeding him and that he will receive the nutrients that is necessary. Build up his immune system as well, Lord, as he battles against the bacteria uh, and the viruses that is in his body. Lord, restore him, renew him, Lord, and heal him. And we pray now for, uh, we are now praying that he will return soon uh, to his family, Lord, to the comfort and love of his daddy and his mommy. We also want to lift up Lord Gabriel and Ruth into your hands. Lord, you know that he has been tiring for both of them, but Lord, they have continued to care for their son. So refresh them and renew them. Lord, and most importantly, let them never give up and let them know that you are with them and that the church family is continuing to uphold them in love and in prayer. Father, right now, we also want to commend our beloved nation into your hands. Lord, during this time of COVID-19, we pray for your wisdom, your protection, Lord, uh, and your providence upon our nation. We pray especially for our government leaders. Thank you, Lord, that they have intervened swiftly and they have done what they could. Lord, in these challenging times, Lord, uh, it's easy to get impatient, it's easy to be critical, but we pray for the nation to stand together in unity. Lord, that there will be no finger pointings, Lord, but we'll be willing to do our part to be socially responsible. And so we pray for our uh, government leaders, <clears throat> Lord, to have the wisdom from you, Lord, as they look into the various aspects of the nation in uh, leading the nation through this challenging time, be it the needs of uh, um, our guest workers in the dormitories, or be it the economy of the nation, or providing care and support to those who have fallen into hardship because of COVID-19. Father, we pray for your inspiration. We pray for your guidance, Lord. And we pray that the nation will come through this crisis stronger and more united. <clears throat> we also want to thank you for many who have come forward to offer their resources as well as their, their um their time and their, themselves, Lord, in the various service in CORR. Thank you, Lord, that uh, many have a reason, Lord, reason up to, to uh, do our part, Lord, to serve our community. And so we pray that as um, CORR rolls out our support uh, package for uh, COVID-19, Lord, extending our help <clears throat> to those who are in need, Lord, we pray that many may find uh, the necessary resources, Lord, through these provisions. We pray also that through all this, Lord, the church will rise up to begin to pastor our community and our nation. Lord, may your name be glorified in your church, in COR. Lord, may, may many come to know you. May you set us up on, on, a, on a hill, Lord, on a lampstand. Uh, may we be a light that will shine in dark places. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, we've come to the end of our worship service this uh, today. And I want to thank you for joining us in the worship of our Lord. Um, before we go, we have, I have a, a very quick announcement to bring to all of us. And I'm very excited about it because next weekend will be a special uh, evangelistic service. It will be conducted in both uh, Mandarin and English. And so it's going to be bilingual. Uh, why are we doing that? Because next weekend is Mother's Day and we are going to make use of the occasion to appreciate our parents and our grandparents. So invites will go out to you uh, and I want to encourage you to extend uh, the invitation to our Akong, our Ama, because our children as well as our youth will be putting up special performances and special items uh, that they, how are they going to do it in the midst of COVID-19? I do not know. So that's something that is 
uh, going to, I'm going to keep you in suspense. So tune in next week and come and worship together with us and invite your uh, beloved family to join us as well. Let us receive God's blessing. My friends, may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. God bless.